Let's dive into 1.1. This today we are dealing with um, dealing with points, lines, and planes. And so, so the first step we want to go through here is I want to make sure that we can get some some information defined. All right. And you may be looking at this and going, "Well, this is great, but I don't have any way to reference any of these things." Well, there are a few ways we can do this. One is we can use our online textbook, which would be using Chromebook. Two is we can use a textbook in class, which is what we are going to do right now. We're going to actually use our in class. We're going to use some of the books we have for the class. So right now, we're going to spend a little time going through these and familiarizing ourselves with that. Uh, yesterday, we familiarized ourselves with the online piece. Today, we're going to actually use the book in our hands. So we're going to grab a book, and we're going to keep them at our desk here in a minute. But um, let's go ahead and grab one of those right now. All right, so you guys, you have your textbook. Just so we familiarize ourselves, um, it is a very shiny book. That's not actually from the light. That's actually printed on the front. But in case you guys, all right. They, remember yesterday we kind of went through this. You guys were doing the online piece. So we flip through it and we get all this jazz, and then we get to chapter one. All right. Now let me kind of explain how some of this stuff is set up. Yesterday we talked about the maintaining mathematical efficiency and then we have the mathematical practices that's at the begin that's at every chapter okay and then at the beginning of each section 1.1 it talks about points lines and planes that's our title and then we have our explorations which we are not doing um, right now on these okay and then we turn it over the next page is kind of like your old textbook so if you remember all the way back to algebra Kind of like your old algebra book where it has some things that are bold and highlighted. Those are the things that we define, that we're defining right here. Those are the things listed on our definition sheet here. Okay. And it has some examples you can work through. And we kind of talked a little about those yesterday where in the on the online portion, you could actually click on it and show a little video. Did we do that in here? Yes, no, yes, kind of, maybe. Okay, well, we'll talk about it a little more. And we have some modern progress. Okay, so what you're doing right now is you're going to spend a few minutes just looking up some of these that you don't recognize. Just pick a few of them. We're not going to have enough time to go through every single one and write a big, long definition. Notice it says, in your own words, write the meaning of each vocabulary term. So in your own words. If you're like, what does an undefined term mean? Okay, well, that's a good one for you to look up and then in your own words write it down. Okay, here in about, i got to give myself time limits otherwise I won't get through it. Here in about four minutes, we're moving on. And I'm going to go through a bunch of these together, things that I want you to actually have down. Okay, all right, so go for it. You can work with a partner. You guys have the book. Work together on it. All right, so what are some of these means? What's, what's an undefined term? Alexis? Good. Point, lines, and planes. Points, lines, and planes are all undefined terms. These things are right there are undefined terms. Okay, now we're going to actually give definitions to those undefined terms, which seems kind of weird. All right, well, what's a point? Mathematically, what's a point? Good, yeah, it has no dimension. Like when you're actually looking at your book here, they go through that. They talk about each of those. A point has no dimension. However, the way we show a point in geometry, we can't just say, hey, there's a point. Look, right there, there's a point. You actually have to put something. So the way we show that is we put a point. And we may name that point with a letter by it, for instance, point A. That's a point. Is that a good enough definition? Well, it's up to you. What makes a good definition for you? in your notes is what you will understand at a later time. Okay, You have to ha be able to take good notes that will help you out. I am not checking your notes. Okay, So that's a point. A line. A line connects two points. It goes through two points actually, excuse me. So if I have two points, I can draw a line. We'll call that A and B. So we would mathematically our symbol for that is line AB. We write it like that. We have the arrows on the end. That's how we write them. 
So any two points can form a line. Okay, so if I put another point out here, called that C, well, I could draw <laughs> line AC. That would just be another line. It would go through point A and point C. That's line AC. Any two points can form a line. Okay, any three points make a plane. And those three points have to be in a triangular shape. They can't be in a straight line. Okay, so if you think of like a stool, if I were to put a, a top on this, I'd be able to sit on that stool. Whereas if I put three points in a straight line like this, and I tried to make a stool out of that, that would not be good. It'd be like tipping over and stuff. Okay, the best way I can think about this, think of a door. A door has usually three hinges on it, right? So if I walked over to the door right now, and I, I say, okay, I want to make a plane out of this door. And it goes through these three points. So here's one point, here's two points, here's three points. Is there one single plane that I can make? And well, no, because it hinges on those points. That's why we like those three points to be in a line. If you try to make a door out of three points that are a hinging situation out of three points that are not in a straight line, then that's a problem. It's a hard door to open, right? So in order for that, that door to be anchored in a certain spot, we have this thing called a latch out here. And when it latches, then it forms something, a plane, that is stuck in one spot, okay? So now I have one, two, three points that are not in the same point or not in a straight line. And so that forms a situation where that plane is set. We can't push it over. Okay, that's kind of our door situation. But if you're three, if you have three points that are not in a straight line, then that's also a plane. And so maybe you call that um, ABC. And usually we show a plane using a parallelogram or a rectangular shape. Remember, planes go on forever, though. All right, collinear points. Tell your neighbor what a collinear point is. The word co means together. Linear means line. Together on the same line. Collinear means they're on the same line. Okay? Collinear. Together on the same line. Coplanar means together on same plane. the same plane. So A, B, and C up here, those are coplanar. They're together on the same plane. Could you ever have a situation where points are not on the same plane? Point out to point out a plane to your neighbor in class. Find a plane in class. Not like an airplane, like a plane. All right, where's a plane? Maddie, what do you got? The ceiling's a plane. Good. Now, as Cynthia pointed out, planes never end. So technically, those are planes, but they're planes that actually end. However, if they were to extend on forever, then they keep they could keep going in that direction. Yes. Good. The tabletop's a plane. Jeremiah. The lights lie on their own plane. Yeah. The what? The cow pal. Yeah. Everyone likes the cow pal. Yeah. It lies. The whiteboard is on a plane. Let's focus on the whiteboard for a minute, okay? If I had the whiteboard, and notice here are three points on the whiteboard. One, two, three. Everyone agrees that those are coplanar. Yes? Is this point off the whiteboard, this point that I'm holding way out here, is that coplanar with those three points? A point that's not on the whiteboard? Uh, it's, it is with two of them, for sure but isn't with all three, right? Because this is a plane. There's no way for me to tip that whiteboard and hit this point and still hit those three points. Okay? Assuming those points stay in the same spot. All right? So co coplanar means they're on the same plane. There could be non-coplanar, meaning they're not on the same plane. All right? Um, what are defined terms? Now that we actually defined these the best we could for the undefined terms, defined terms... Yeah, Drew? 
Let's go to point our line. Um, well, we use point our line. We kind of found definitions for those, right? So now it says, let me show you in the book here. Okay, up here it says, in geometry, words like point, line, and plane are undefined terms. Then over here it says, in geometry, terms that can be described using known words, such as a point or line, are defined terms. So when we use point or line, and we're, allowed, we're able to describe those things, those are called defined terms. So, for instance, when we say this is a line, the definitions below AB, they're using this line AB to help define these. So using this line AB, we could say, hey, the points in between A and B, those are endpoints. A and B are endpoints, so all points in between represent a line segment. Okay, so this is segment AB. So if I have a segment going through my line, excuse me, if I have a line going through two points AB, these points right here designate a segment. Okay, they're bound by those two points, and we write that as segment AB. Just some math, it's just some vocab that we need to know. Your endpoints here, well, A is an endpoint and B is an endpoint. All right, so for those of you who are sick of the definitions, we're almost done there. Array, array starts at one point and extends on in the same direction forever. So for instance, A, C, that's array. Why didn't I use B? Because I got sick of using B. So now it's AC. Okay. And we write that as ray AC. We could write it like this, or we could show it like this. There's point A there, and it could go that way. And that could be C. But we still write it as ray AC. That's the same. That's our. That's how we write that. That's the symbol for writing that. And so it doesn't matter which way the arrow is pointing. When we write it, we write it like that. Okay. Does anyone know another way of light writing that segment? We write it alphabetically, usually A B, but we could also write it as segment B A. Another way. All right. Last one is opposite rays. Opposite rays start at the same point and extend on in each direction in different ways. So if let's say that's point A, we call that C. If we had an opposite ray, it goes that way, we call that B. So AB, ray AB, and ray AC are opposite rays. They're going in opposite directions. But they start at the same endpoint. Okay, notice opposite rays form a straight line, which we're going to use a lot this year. They all start at that, that endpoint. And when we write our when we talk about a ray, we always name the endpoint first. Okay. Any questions? If two things intersect, you're going to see this a lot. Two lines intersect, they intersect at a single point in, in planar geometry. Okay. So that would be the intersection. Okay, any questions there? And for those of you that like finished all that, you look at the next page of your journal, they actually show you all those definitions in a nice, beautiful way as well. And now you have them in your notes as well. So you can add anything you want to in there. Okay, we're going to pause right there. I want everyone to take out yesterday's assignment, please. So go ahead, go ahead and close your textbooks right now. Okay, we're going to go through some examples as a class. Textbooks are closed. This is example one. Give two other names for plane PQ, or excuse me, for line PQ and plane R. So everyone looking at the top of your note page, I forgot there's a lot of things we have to talk about this first. Hey, can I, Drew, can I borrow your note page? I want to see the top up here. It says Drew Pauly. You don't have to put that name. You can put your name. All right? But our section number is what? 
1.1. It's right here. Our title is points, lines, planes, our page numbers, 3 through 10. And these are our learning goals. If you want to copy those down, that's fine. If you don't want to, that's up to you. But those are that's what we're going to be going through today. All right? You kind of fill out the top part there. At least you know where to reference in the book. And we're going to go through some examples as a class. Give you a chance to pick. All right, here we go. Two other names for PQ and plane R. And then name three points that are collinear. Name four points that are collinear. All right, I want you to work together and do that. You get about a minute or so. Yep. No. Hey, hey guys, two good questions just came up. First, where is this in my journal? It's not in your journal. You're doing this on your note page. Okay. Second question that came up, once again, another good question. So you're doing, you're doing this work on the note page you picked up on the WAN. Second question that came up, like, I don't know what I'm doing with this stuff down here. Well, right now you're putting your answers over here. Okay? Over here in your main ideas, I'll explain what to do with that here in a minute. Okay? Yeah? On your thing, what is the, what is the letter M? The point? Letter M? Oh, letter N, that names this line. So another way we name lines is to actually just put a letter by it. This is line N. It doesn't have a point. This is line M. This is plane R. Sometimes we name planes by putting a letter in the corner. It's not a point, though. So let's say I was doing... Bless you. Let's say I'm doing this problem real quick. So Maddie, this is... Maddie, I'll get to your question here in a minute, okay? This is example one. Okay, so if you're if you were studying later on, you can go back to your textbook and look at example one. This is the problem you would see. Okay, and then part A, name two other names for PQ. Well, what's another name for line PQ? Brendan, what's one? QP. Good. We could just switch the letters around. QP. Okay, and I guess I could use capital Qs instead there. Right, and what's another name for line PQ? Jeremiah, yeah, line N. Okay, so we just write line N, or just N would be fine. Maddie, question now. You can grab another one. That's fine. It's supposed to go in your journal. Yeah, that's all right. It's whatever's going to work for you, so don't like recopy it. That seems silly, right? All right. Letter B. Name three points that are collinear and four points that are coplanar. All right. Tell your neighbor three points that are collinear. Okay, I hear a lot of S, S, P, and T. Everyone agree? Yeah. Those are collinear. Good. S, P, T. Those are three points that are collinear. How about four points that are coplanar? Carlo? You could, but then we'd need a fourth. So what would be a fourth one? So if we used S, P, T as coplanar... That's true. What's a fourth one that's on that plane? Yeah, B. So you could say S, P, T, and B, all four of those. Good job. Any questions? You want to say good morning? All right. Hey, um... You guys, the benefit of using, these are called Cornell notes. The benefit of using this note strategy is when you go to study now and you you have, you filled out your top, you know, 1.1, you put your titles, points, lines, planes, and you've got your page numbers, pages 3 through 10, you have your date and your name. Okay, when I go to study now, I could go, okay, that was in 1.1, one, one, this is example 1, and these were my answers. Oh, yeah, I got that. I'm moving on. If you're doing a definition later on, maybe you write a definition in here. You could, 
you could have used this for your definitions. If you like using this more than you do your journal when we're doing definitions, then use this page. That's up to you. Okay, I'll always have some out there. All right, but these are this is a great way for you to take notes. And I have the sheets, but when when you're taking another class, you just I mean just take a notebook paper and draw your line down the side, and that's how you take your notes. It's a great way to take notes. Then at the bottom, there's a place for you to summarize what you learned. So like when you get home tonight, you're like, man, I can't even remember what I did in math. Quickly go back and you're like, oh yeah, and do a quick summary. Or at the end of class, write your summary. That way you can look. Any questions? Okay, moving on. I want you guys to take a look at this next example here. <coughs> example two. Give it a go. Give another name for GH and name all the rays with endpoint J, which these rays are opposite rays. Work together, talk about it. All right, here we go. Another name for GH. What do we got for GH? HG? Yeah. I mean, GH we could also call HG. So that's segment HG. We're good. Okay? We could just switch the letters around. Could we have used J? Well, they didn't show it as a point, but technically it's a point of intersection. You could have called GH. You could. Could we call it GJ? Yeah. Why can't we? Yeah, you have to get from this point to that point, right? And J only goes to there, so it's only that's cutting off a little piece. So you can't call it GJ, all right? If it, if we're dealing with a line, you could, but a segment you can't. A segment is a piece of a line. Okay, name all rays with endpoint J. Holy moly, that's a lot of rays, man. Give me one ray, Shelby. What's one ray? JH. All right. And what's the opposite ray of JH? Um, Patrick, what do you got? J, opposite ray of JH. JG. All right. Okay. I see you, Brandon, but I'm 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 ignoring right now. I'm trying to call out names so I get to know the names. All right. So uh, Gino, give me another one. JF, good. And opposite of JF, yeah, Drew? JE. JE, good. Notice we're always starting with J. So JF, okay. So we've got that one is opposite that one. We'll both start right there. All right. Any questions? You know, burrito, man. Everyone rate themselves one to five right now. Five, you got it. One, you're struggling. Some of you don't have fingers. That's scary. Make sure your neighbor has fingers. Patrick, what happened? Oh, thought it was an accident up there. All right, here we go. Number three, example three. Sketch a plane and a line that is in the plane. And then part B, sketch a plane and a line that is that does not intersect the plane. And then letter C, sketch a plane and a line that intersects the plane at one point. Dude. I'll tell you, and I'm going to stop using my, I think you guys understand how to use the note page now, right? Okay, very good. I'm going to stop writing in that. And what I'd like you to do is first understand how to sketch a plane. And remember, we sketch planes by drawing, usually you'll see it in a parallelogram shape. It could be a rectangle shape, which is also a parallelogram. There's a plane. Now, how are you going to sketch a plane on a line that's on the plane? It's like, Having your tabletop, so here's my tabletop, that's my plane, and here's my line on the plane. Dude. So there's my tabletop, here's my line on the plane. Is that how you do it? Yeah, well, you could move the line, you could change the line. It could be pointing in a different direction, but that's it. It's it tougher, though, when you sketch a plane and a line that does not intersect the plane. So there's my plane. How do we sketch a line that doesn't intercept that? Yes, Dan. So like right up here? There you go. Good. Now some of you will go, well, what happens if you extend that plane? It goes on forever. That's true. It's just this line has to be lying above that line. In fact, this line is, or lying above that plane. This line is actually what to that plane? 
It's parallel. I want you to find a line in this classroom that is parallel to a plane. Point it out to your neighbor. All right, so you guys are looking at this. Give me a line that's parallel to a plane. Brian? What's that? The lights and the whiteboard. Good. Oh, the lights above the whiteboard. Okay. Yes? The floor and the table, those are actual parallel planes. Okay, now we also have these things called skew lines that we're going to talk about later. That's when we're dealing with different lines. But for now, I think that'll work. All right, letter C, sketch a plane and a line that intersects at one point. Dude, here's my plane. Explain to your neighbor how you're going to make a line intersect that plane at one point. In fact, if you have to, maybe use your paper to explain to them how you're going to Yeah, check it out. Here's my paper. And here's my plane that intersects that paper. Or that line that intersects that paper at one point. Isn't that awesome? I know. Check out that manipulator. That's pretty sweet. I hope you didn't do that to your paper. Otherwise, your paper's destroyed now. Well, you can. I mean, technically, you can. Sure. But, you know, if you're drawing a picture of that, maybe you put a point here and extend a line up like so and then below that how do we show it when we can't actually see the line and we dash it okay until we get there and then all right so there is my line that's going through that plane at one point it's poking through it Pretty sweet. I, I kind of like my pictures like that. But that's harder to put in your binder. Just saying. All right. Any questions? All right. How many are you ready to move, moving on? Okay. We got one more, actually, two more examples, but I don't know if we're going to get to the last one. Example four sketch a plane that intersects any line. Excuse me, sketch two planes that intersect in a line. Go for it. Can anyone find a picture of this in the room? Where two planes intersect in a line? Cynthia? Yeah, where two walls come together. If you look anywhere in your house where two walls come together, they form a line. They call that the corner. Back when I was a kid, back when I was a kid, you get in trouble, they make you stand in the corner. You'd be like, put your nose in the corner, dude. You go stand in the corner. Bro, they still do that? We don't do that around the house. Right, that's what I'm doing wrong. All right. Let's stand in a corner. So, look, if you got a plane, now I got to tell you that I'm not an amazing drawer, but I can sometimes draw geometry stuff okay. Sometimes. Not always. Okay. It really hurts my feelings when people start making fun of my drawings. Though, so if you do your best not to make fun of me, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. E extra credit for rendering. All right. So there we've got it. Now I actually should dash this line. Okay. But those are two planes that are intersecting at a line. You guys could do that with paper too. Like put a cut in a paper and cut another paper. If we had more time, we'd make some sweet little pictures. For you. Okay, you could do that. Two planes. They intersect at this line. So plane N and plane M intersect at line, we'll call this, what do we want to call it? X, thank you for helping me, and Y, X, Y. Right, man. That's as far as we get today, guys. I've got to give you your assignment. Your assignment is only 100 problems, so don't worry. Um, if it was more than that, I'd be a little concerned. Okay. Only 100. Just joking. It's not 100.